Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amit. Today we are going to answer this question and perform a demo. How to change database name inside stored procedure in a SQL Server? So we have answer on the right side. We cannot use use keyword inside stored procedure trigger or function in SQL Server to change the database. Um, but we can use dynamic SQL to handle these type of situations. So let's go to SSMS and perform this demo and see what exactly we are talking in the answer. So right now what I have here, I am using the word keyword use and then I'm using database name and that's how I, I will be able to change the scope or select the database again um, for, for uh, uh, select the database against which I want to run my query so <clears throat> one way we can select from here or the other ways we can use the keyword use and database name and change the scope of this session to that database so let's uh, if I run this one so you will see the, now the database is selected test and uh, what I'm doing here in this query I'm trying to get the table names uh, from the database with the record counter so I'm using sys indexes view and joining with sys tables and only getting the user tables so let's run the entire thing and we can see that it returned us uh, the database name as we are in the test database and it returned the table name customer and it has five rows so if you go to the test and see the tables you will see only one table so it is returning us all the tables and especially uh, we are only interested uh, in the user uh, tables uh, so it is returning us user tables uh, with the record count so now consider we want to run this query against all of the databases uh, and uh, how we can change that let's uh, go to the next uh, and uh, we are gonna write our query so we'll say go and we say use test one so this is how we do change our database name and then we say go and let me take the same query and run it now we are running on the first part first uh, query this one against the test database but then we are changing the scope to test one database and running the same query so we will be getting the results from two databases so we got this one from a test database this one we got from test one so it has one table ordered but there, is, there are no records in that table now let's convert this one to the stored procedure and see if we are able to do that we can call it create procedure dbo get um, records and then we can say as begin and, and at the end we have to say end so that's how we write our store procedure so we use the keyword create procedure and then we have to provide the name and after providing the name we have to <coughs> excuse me we have to say as and then we begin uh, uh, provide the be, begin uh, keyword here and then at the end we have we have to provide end and the rest of that will be our queries or uh, whatever we want to do maybe update the lead insert and then anything what we want to do that will be here in this uh, part so we are using uh, the same two queries what we use uh, to get the record count from two different uh, uh, databases for the user tables so let's run this one and see what happened so what we get here it is returning us error and saying uh, a user database statement is only allowed in uh, uh, per, uh, is, is not sorry is not allowed in a procedure function or trigger so that tells us clearly we cannot use a statement so th that that's the problem when if we cannot uh, use uh, the use keyword then how we will change the database name inside the store procedure so let's uh, go to another solution remove this part and let's uh, consider dynamic sql so if uh, we are running a dynamic sql dynamic sql is uh, we prepare our sql and then uh, 
we use different variables uh, in that uh, SQL statement and run it, it, it run when we execute it so it will not run uh, at the time of uh, preparation uh, but till we don't execute this one so it by the time we will have uh, all the uh, values for the variables so let me declare a variable so we say declare a uh, variable at the red db name and then uh, i'm gonna say is equal to sorry watcher that's the data type let's say 100 and then uh, we will set uh, the red db name is equal to let me run this one against test database and then uh, we will declare a variable in which we will save this entire query we call call it at rate sql and i'm gonna keep this one watch your max uh, and then we will say set uh, at the rate sql is equal to this one uh, we can take the same query but uh, before even we write the query here we want to change the scope uh, of this uh, uh, database we want to change to the test right so we will be using uh, we can let me uh, show you with the out using the variable first and then we'll uh, use the variable so here terminator and then we will in enter the entire query put the quotes around single quotes and then next part is uh, we can use the uh, store procedure execute uh, to run this uh, um, SQL now here i'm not really using this uh, variable at, at this moment because i hard coded the value but as we are in the test and if we will run this uh, this uh, dynamic sql is going to run its own session so it's going to uh, start a new session complete it and still we will be in the test so but this query will run against uh, uh, we will be in test one but this query will be running against uh, you uh, test database so let's run this one and we see that it is returning us database name test and one table and it is uh, having five uh, records so that's how we will prepare our dynamic sql and then run against multiple databases and change them by using the cursor so we will be looping through say, multiple databases and then changing the database name here so we will say plus at the rate db so right now um, we hard coded the first time this time we are going to change the variable so here uh, now i use uh, this variable and uh, this is set to test uh, even let's say it is uh, now uh, let's uh, set to sales now if we run this uh, dynamic sql what is going to happen uh, even we are in the test one database uh, this batch is going to run uh, it is going to create new session and run against sales database and return us all the record count for the tables uh, user tables from the sale uh, database so let's run this one and we see that it return us all the tables uh, with the record count uh, from the sale database but still uh, we are in uh, the test database uh, as a main uh, session so uh, once uh, this is dynamic sql is done it destroys session it closes the session so that's how it works now next part i want to show you one more thing before we go ahead and uh, um, jump to the code i have uh, prepared for the entire database um, let's go here so if let's say I create table I'm creating a temp table here so with single hash uh, this is called a uh, local temp table so consider ID integer if I'm creating this table and I am able to query this table in this session temp now if I will open a new query here and try to run the same query for temp what is going to happen it is going to tell me you are uh, you don't have that object invalid object name because the scope of a local temp table is uh, limited to this session only so wherever you create it it is the uh, this uh, that's the scope of that uh, tem local temp table but uh, if i will create uh, the global temp table that with double hash so what is going to happen now if I will create this one this temp table is uh, available in this session 
as well uh, if I'll copy from here and paste it here I can query this uh, global timetable from other sessions so this table is going to be available uh, till uh, this uh, uh, window is open so let's uh, if I will um, I will close this window then uh, if I will run this query the the, the, the timetable global timetable is gone so that's one thing I want to tell you and I will show you why I'm not teaching you this uh, local timetable and global timetable difference so let's close this one and uh, jump to the main code that I have prepared with the store procedure and uh, uh, with dynamic SQL uh, we used inside the store procedure to change the database name and run our query against the multiple databases so here we are saying create store procedure and procedure name and I'm run, running against I'm creating this store procedure in test database and then we have as keyword we have begin and then uh, I'm checking if object ID from the temp table and then global temp table record count is not null that means if it is returning me some record it means the table is there so I'm dropping that temp, temp table next part is uh, I'm creating uh, this uh, temp table so I'm saying create table and uh, providing the table name global temp table name and then database name table name and record counts these are the columns uh, I'm interested uh, to get uh, get the information in them next part is I'm using the cursor so if you see use cursor to loop through databases so I have used the databases and I'm declaring a variable for database name so I can use this variable in the dynamic SQL and uh, here I have a declare cursor where this um, um, the name should be um, I have done CDC cursor but I, you, you, I was making some uh, um, scripts uh, for CDC and uh, this is I uh, copied from the same way so you can change to DB cursor or whatever the name you want it so it doesn't really matter so we are but give some proper name um, this is not related to CD, uh, CDC so let's do one thing we are gonna copy this whole thing uh, and then uh, press control F and then uh, quick replace uh, and we want to replace with the record count count cursor that's more meaningful name for this uh, scenario so as we, uh, we have uh, replaced so it replaced six places and that's fine so now I'm declaring this cursor next part is uh, this is the query that is going to populate the records uh, so I'm getting all the uh, user databases uh, as uh, I'm saying uh, database ID greater than 4 that's for system databases 1 2 3 and uh, that we will ignore that we are only interested to get uh, the user database names so this is uh, going to return us that then we are opening a cursor and uh, then we are fetching uh, a record uh, in the, our case we have database name so we will fetch the very first uh, database name for what uh, this query returned and then uh, next part uh, we have a while loop uh, we want to start a loop uh, and uh, loop through all uh, database names one by one uh, and then uh, get the record count for the tables in that data, uh, database uh, for the for the user tables so here uh, I declare uh, and uh, um, internal or local you call it a DB uh, name variable so what I'm doing here uh, I'm populating this uh, variable with the database name that our, our cursor has it so every time cursor is populating this one inside I'm just passing that to new variable I, I could have used the same one so let's uh, let's consider we, we, we can use the same one if we want if we just uh, uh, I put code name around here uh, if database has some uh, space or something <coughs> excuse me so that will be taken care um, so th this was one way to show you even uh, these uh, um, variable what you uh, populate by using the cursor they can also be assigned to other variables inside the loop and you can use them next uh, what we are doing we are preparing our dynamic SQL so we are saying use and then using the DB name so each time it will give us a, a new database name and then we are executing the same query so I am putting insert here so I have insert and this is the same query that is returning us a database name table name and record count so I copied this query and pasted it here 
make sure you put these uh, single quotes around here and all that that that's very important so you you might want to print it uh, instead of execute it first to prepare it and then print it and then execute it so that query uh, is uh, uh, going to run against the database name that we would have here so each time it is going to loop through change the database name and run it as remember i have told you the dynamic sql runs is in own session so it create a new session and then run it if i will use the local temp table once the session is done that will not be available to us that was the one reason i showed you why we use global temp table so in this case once the dynamic sql will be even done the session will be closed uh, we we will have the access to the global temp table because we created a temp table global temp table here and uh, we loaded uh, from other session uh, but uh, um, we didn't close the main uh, session so that table is going to be available after even a dynamic sql session will be done so that's how you will prepare your dynamic sql change the database name and then uh, next uh, it is going to fetch the next uh, database name uh, from the given list uh, and save in that and then we add then we have a closer cursor and the allocate cursor at the end the last one is we are selecting everything from that uh, global temp table so what will happen it will return us database name table name and count so that's how you will change the database name inside the store procedure uh, let's uh, run this query you can create this store procedure in any database uh, because uh, um, that really doesn't matter as we are going to get the list of the databases uh, uh, by using this query and it is going to loop through anyways so it doesn't matter wherever you want to create it you create it it is uh, going to run for all user databases so create execute okay so uh, I have created uh, this uh, procedure already so I'm, I'm gonna drop this one Sorry, well, early morning when sometime you get up and do the very first thing. Okay, so we are creating this procedure. Entire thing, I should um, run this one. It is uh, saying uh, the name already exists. So let me drop it. Drop procedure, procedure name. So we run this one. Okay, so the procedure is dropped successfully. Now we can create it. So go ahead and create it. Let's create this one in the test one. So we um, here. Now this uh, procedure is created in the test one database. We can just cop, uh, uh, select this part uh, and uh, execute it. Or uh, we can r take this one and uh, write, uh, open a new query and say execute uh, this one. So your choice, however you want to do it. You know, so you can see that uh, when you run this query, it is going to return us uh, all the database names uh, and then uh, the table uh, names uh, and then the record count for each of the table. So th that's a long video. I'm sorry for all that, but all those concepts uh, are really important, especially how to change uh, the database uh, name uh, and uh, by using the dynamic SQL and also how global temp table and uh, local temp tables are important uh, and uh, the scope of uh, uh, dynamic sql uh, is limited to the new session it uh, does create and close once it's uh, done so that's the reason we are using a global temp table you can always use a, a permanent table instead of using the global temp table you and uh, you can always truncate on the top uh, and then uh, reload it at the end you can truncate it again if you want or leave that one as it is uh, for the for, um, for the reference uh, and the uh, next time when you run the store procedure it will truncate and reload it thanks very much for watching this video and i will see you next time